Welcome everyone, this is Chris with Cast and Comics. I just got a little bit of a comic haul for you guys. Um, see some of the fun stuff that I picked up and let's just start right into it. It's not quite as big a stack as the last comic haul, um, but there's enough here. And uh, this is a lot of stuff that you guys probably have seen and some stuff you haven't. Uh, Cinnamon, this is a behemoth book that came out. I know Second Street Marvel has been disappointed with some of their uh, translated works. They should probably just do an imprint so people know what's translated and whatnot. Um, but, uh, you know, I've heard okay things about it. I've heard things where it just doesn't match. It has like that uh, comic strip feel to it. I've heard Heathcliff. People call it Heathcliff and whatnot. We'll see if I even bother to uh, read it. This is uh, Jin Hunter from Black Box Comics. This is from Jay Sandlin, uh, a, a writer that's been working. I've been seeing him on, uh, he had Hell, the Hellfighter Quinn book, which I don't even know finished, to be honest, because that number one came out just before the pandemic and then it disappeared a little bit. And uh, he's doing a few... Uh, few different things. Um, art looks pretty cool. Looks uh, sort of like if uh, an American was doing anime. How about that? So that's pretty interesting. So we'll see how Jin, Jin the Hunter or Jin Hunter goes. Um, this is something I was interested at first. I'm still interested in the show, to be honest, but I'm not running to it as much. And I haven't read these prequel books yet. So Master of the Universe Revelation. I may have bought this um, because it was a... Maybe a B cover, so I don't know who... Oh, yeah, this is the Shinkevich cover. So that doesn't immediately look like Shinkevich to me, but um, that's probably why I bought it. So that's an okay cover. Not my favorite. It was one that one that you couldn't see before they before you ordered it. Uh, the Unbelievable Unteens. This is uh, Jeff Lemire writing a book from the world of Black Hammer. So I will be happy when I catch up to this. I'm only a, a couple trades away. I can start reading the new stuff. Um, apparently I bought two covers. Uh, I don't know who did which one and why I would have done that. Hey, everyone's up, uh, everyone's crazy about this book. No one even really talked about virus, let alone heavy metal books. Virus is an imprint of the heavy metal singles that are coming out. So, um, it's hard for me to say whether this book has uh, hype because it is good or because it's rare. Uh, for some reason this, uh, got onto the, uh, the zeitgeist of the, uh, comic community, pretty, pretty basic art inside, to be honest. And I like heavy metal books, but you really expect some, not, not everyone's Corbin or anything like that, but you really expect some of that weirder kind of, uh, thing. Savage Circus. I read number one and we're at number five and they've unfortunately changed the size of these heavy metal books. This was a, this is a, another imprint elements and they used to come in these bigger forms and, uh, they're not doing that anymore. And me no likey that you know what i don't think i read number one because i would have uh i would have remembered it being black and white i guess oh no it's not so i think i did read number one that art looks familiar um and I, i've liked a lot of these uh the rise number two so this is the first one that came in regular comic form uh, again i don't like it but they're 299 so it's still cool you could see like the covers have a a, a unifying style to them and this is actually written by um uh, George C. Romero, so George Romero's uh, son doing a sequel or some kind of spinoff um, to the Night of the Living Dead stuff. Uh, I've been getting these Canto 3s. I'm only through the first trade, though, so um, I still need to catch up with even the middle one. Um, the Monster of Temple Peak. This is going to go on the immediate to read pile. I uh, was able to skip it uh, because I knew it was coming in the mail, and so I waited on it and I was able to skip it, so we'll get to that here in a minute. A uh, bit of root. Uh, I'm not sure if that's a B cover or not. Let's see. Yep, it's a B cover. So I must have gotten this because either it was an homage or by a artist I like. But now that I could see it, probably wouldn't have picked this up off of the shelf. I do read bit of root in in trade, and I really love that story though. So that is not a shot on the story. Um, High Republic number eight. I think I read this online, um, but I still collect those Star Wars books. So grabbing, I'm probably going to put them over here. There's another cover of High Republic number eight for uh, my viewing pleasure. Move that one over. Children of the Atom, there's the variant. This is the last issue of Children of the Atom. Like a lot of these um, very adjacent X books that aren't part of like the big, let's say four or five, uh, it, it gets a little bit lost. Got a little bit lost in the, in some of the events, which is a, a disappointing effect of um, the Hickman run that is being cut short. Uh, X-Force. This has been one of the better books of uh, the Hickman era, even though Hickman doesn't write it, right? And that's a really good, really nice cover, actually. I really like that. 
So very violent. Um, I'm uh, rereading Uncanny X-Force right now. So um, it doesn't compare to that <laughs> at all. Uh, and also reading Grant Morrison's X-Men run also makes me realize how much Hickman borrowed from that era. Um, and then uh, how much better that that run is so far because it's just focused. Like there's just a focus is what X-Men loses sometimes. Um, you know, when it's when it's at is its most stereotypical. Uh, Dark Age, I think I've showed this and I have it at my regular my regular comic shop and uh, excellently ordering it here. Um, some of the worst printing I've ever seen. Like you could see all kinds of uh, screw ups there. Uh, Maria Lovett's Porcelain. This is going, you guys know I love Maria Lovett. So this is going on the immediately immediate to read pile. I skipped this too, uh, happily. Um, this is some of her old stuff, but I think I'm going to enjoy it more than Aero Psyche. I think she's uh, finding, starting to find that like Maria Lovett I, I really like here. But you still see it's very, um, it still has that sparse feeling, even though more is going on with the color and whatnot. So excited to read that. Um, and Snelson, Comedy is Dying. So I'll probably put this on the two read pile too. It's from Ahoy. I've been on and off with Ahoy. I think they try to be funny. I don't know that it always works, so it's my shtick there. Um, two manga on this haul. Um, one is Madk, and uh, this was probably legitimately the worst. Here's number one. Legitimately the worst manga I've ever read. Um, but I had already pre-ordered number two, and I might end up reading it. You know, the worst manga I've ever read that, you know, wasn't like a love story, something like that, right? And it was just... It's weird enough sounding that uh, I should be on board, but then it was just, you know, eh, eh you know, eh. Normally I, I, I give a little room for the experimental stuff. And then next up is uh, Laughing Under the Clouds. This is volume three, and I haven't read volume one, I have or two, obviously, I have number two. But volume, oh, this is volume two. Volume two was unfortunately... Um, the victim of a, of a flood. Um, I didn't really have a flood, but a leak. And it was the, really the only thing, you guys know I'm in the garage a lot, and it was really the only thing that was actually on the floor that wasn't in a plastic or something like that. So uh, I will read volume two and get through it, read volume one first, but I, now, I, now I have volume three, already ready to go. Um, what do we got next? Let's do a few more. Let's do a few more comics. So, um, this is going to be an immediate read. Mark, anytime Monk Russell does something, it's, it's relevant enough for me to read. I am waiting um, for Fantastic Four to come on Marvel Unlimited, his uh, Fantastic Four life story. Uh, but all his other stuff I, I hop on right away. Um, actually, that's a lie because I'm reading this. I loved the first. Uh, I, I liked strongly the first run of Second Coming. Uh, but the second um, volume, I, I'm trade waiting. So I'm still waiting on that. It's taking a minute. Uh, Lucky Devil, number one, uh, from Colin Bunn. I haven't heard really people talking about this as much as some of, some of his other work, but the guy is so prolific, you know. Um, can't talk about everything that Colin Bunn does. So this is uh, The Dreaming, number 12. So the only other person I know reading this is Sleepy Reader. Um, I, I actually like both uh, arcs uh, equally. I, I, I have problems with both of them. And I like both of them uh, a lot. I'm, I'm really just happy that they're different. Uh, is this the free comic? This must be the free comic book day version because it's big. Shouldn't be this big, right? Nope. Nope. This is number three. It's in a different size. I didn't, I didn't expect that. I didn't expect number three to be in the larger size. Um, waited on that too. I, I, you know, I'm getting it online, so I want the Ninja Turtle one, but it got crazy. Uh, Chasing the Dragon, number five. I have no, I don't think I was buying this. I have no idea why it's there. I must have accidentally ordered it. I do that sometimes. The Me You Love in the Dark. I think some people are really into this. Oh, yeah, yeah. this is the Scotty Young Jorge Corona new book. So that's going to go on the to-read pile for sure. Um, I think people get, you know, just because Mirka and Delfo and Maria Lovett both um, put their names in front of the titles, uh, I think people, sometimes we get confused on... I don't, but I think some people do. So, uh, you know, she's been hit or miss as a writer. I don't know if she's writing this book. Yeah, she's the writer and artist. So I'll give this one a chance. Sweet Paprika sounded pretty cool to me. Uh, Siphon number one. No one really talked about this, huh? And that's a number one right there. So uh, it's Top Cow. So sometimes Top Cow doesn't get a top billing anymore. 
Um, put that on the to read pile. Next up is We Promised Utopia. I remember reading this and thinking it looked cool. It's a $5 comic. Um, Literati, Literati Press is ambitious subculture publisher and bookstop in the hysteric Paseo Plunge in the Paseo Arts di District. Um, the literary community within Oklahoma. Stony, you need to get on this literary lit, literati press stuff. Um, art looks pretty cool in it, I suppose. Like it, it has promise, its own little style there. So we'll, we'll give that a read. Nice little uh, weirdo book, as I like to call them. Um, and then, ooh, I'm glad I waited. No, I didn't wait on these. Uh, maybe I did. Four Lam and Zuckus and the Bounty Hunters. Yeah. So I read these online, but I, I got the variant covers here. Um, you know, it's been good to be honest. It's just the, and the tie-ins work for, uh, War of the Bounty Hunters. They actually work. The problem is, is that since you're getting War of the Bounty Hunters, which is the story, the actual event series, that's what pushes the story along and you're waiting month to month. And then you're getting all these tie-ins that occur during it. You know, it makes it feel really slow. Although individually I enjoy all the tie-ins. It's like a problem with the, the world of, uh, of big events, but then it gets people to buy them all. So it's hard to say, right? Here is Spirits of Vengeance. This is a variant edition. I probably didn't buy, I also wasn't buying comics in August at the shops, but uh, I got the variant edition. I think I like the, the A cover better. So I don't, I don't think I got that through Gmart here. Um, was this an Eric DeCall cover? Or a, not an Eric, Jeff DeCall cover? I think I got that um, because of who did the cover, but it's another one where I didn't see the cover first, where I just like the artist. And you, you pull the trigger on the cover sometimes. And then you're like, eh, it's okay. It's okay. Um, oh, yeah. Oh, this is this James Stokoe cover. So, oh, and James Stokoe also does one of the one of the uh, books here. I, actually, now that I look at it, the Deadpool doesn't look too much like James Stokoe, but definitely definitely the tank is uh, Stokoe art there. So, yeah, I also got this because he did some interiors. Um, and then some variant X-Men covers. There's the Hellions one for 14. This is uh, an X-Men number two variant. Um, I don't even know who that is. Is that what? That's not uh, Laura Kinney, is it? I don't even know who that is. Um, I love these. I love these covers for some reason. The giant trading card covers. Um, we Don't Kill Spiders, number one. Uh, I haven't... I haven't absolutely loved anything from Black Caravan, but I've liked it all, and I like sort of the style and what the... Oh, I love Cherry Blackbird. Um, and I like the style and where they're going and and, and the, uh, you know, what they intend to do with it. Um, so I hope I like this, too. I, I liked also um, Black Friday and stuff, so we'll see where it goes. Uh, Horizon Zero Dawn, I think I got this because it was a peach cover. It's a pretty basic peach cover, though, so, um, you know, she could turn out those covers because her style's very... Very simple, to be honest. Um, I got this a while ago, actually, but I'll show it anyway. This is the uh, comic book creator uh, magazine. This is the Barry Windows or Smith, Smith issue. Still haven't read Monsters. So this is pretty embarrassing. Um, but this is definitely one of my favorite artists, and especially in, in the context of like older artists, where they're not always my thing. But Barry Windsor Smith absolutely is He's one of my favorite artists in general. And uh, I still got a lot um, to read from him. Here is uh, Amber Blake, Operation Butterfly. It's a larger book from Magma Comics, so I like um, the European size stuff. So, um, you know, I enjoy different formats. And last but not least, um, some, I think his first name's Renee. I forget. Everyone just calls him Tardy. So um, I've read one or maybe two things from him, and uh, I really love it. A uh, French cartoonist that is uh, being uh, reprinted a lot from uh, Fantagraphics. And um, so... When this came up, if you can get it, if you can get these Fantagraphics hardcovers for the 30% off or 35% off, I, te I tend to jump on it. Um, I may have to lighten up on that now. But um, so uh, these have just been wonderful. He's just a, a wonderful cartoonist in general. Hey, that's all I got. That was the haul. Uh, thank you guys. I haven't been posting that much. In fact, the last two videos were like two weeks ago and they were movie reviews. I still will do that. But uh, I do, obviously, I'm a comic channel and I want to do more of that. I want to do more of the uh, in-depth stuff like I did with... Um, like I did with Department of Truth Volume 1, so I'll do Department of Truth Volume 2 when it comes through. I probably would do a, something in-depth um, like uh, Die Number 1. And uh, I have Lonely Receiver because I have some books from an artist that... Um, that uh, not, it's not Jen Bartell. I forget the artist's name right now. Uh, Jen, Jen, Jen Hickman. 
um, that she cites as an inspiration for Lonely Receiver. I have some of his books. It's a Polish artist um, that, I, that I have some books for that I think, uh, you know, I have something to say about. That's the biggest thing, I guess, is that I feel like I have something to say, whether you guys think I do or not. So anyway, thank you guys for watching at Chaos and Comics, Instagram and Twitter. I will see you guys next time.